Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders, uh, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for uh, thank you for joining us for our session today. The next in the Admiral Markets uh, webinar series of uh, Trading Spotlight, and today we're here to talk about how to trade using a simple moving average strategy. And my name is Paul Wallace. I'm a host for uh, today's session. So. What are we going to look at uh, talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about, you know, what is a moving average? I appreciate, as always, that we have a very broad range of experience in the, uh, in the room from people who are complete beginners to trading to people with great experience. But we just very quickly talk about what's a moving average and in particular, what are their pros and cons? And of course, the most important for today is how do we use them? How do we actually look to, uh, to utilize them in our own trading? I'm going to talk about a little simple moving average strategy that you can utilize and take away. And if there is time at the end, then we'll look to identify possible trade setups. So there's plenty of us for us to, uh, to cover. And uh, as always, you know, I appreciate you joining. We, uh, we here at Admiral Markets, we, uh, you know, we appreciate you joining us. We love having the interaction. If you're uh, joining us today, please feel free to, to fire away with your questions. Uh, we, uh, we always enjoy that. Or if you're watching this on uh, the YouTube channel, then please interact with us. Please drop us a comment or ask us a question. And either myself or the uh, Admiral Markets team will be very happy to, to help you in your, uh, in your questions. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Paul Wallace, and uh, you know, after a uh, career in the Air Force, I've been trading for uh, well for many, many years now, and I primarily look to trade uh, FX indices and uh, commodities, and I've had the uh, the choice to uh, trade through for both hedge funds and high, high net worth clients. For my uh, sort of uh, longer term trading, my swing trading, I tend to be a trend trader, and for uh, my intraday trading, I tend to focus on mean reversion. Uh, and of course, what we're here to talk about today is, of course, is the Admiral Markets a webinar series. And Admiral Markets are a Forex and CFD broker with over 8,000 financial instruments and have offices in 20 plus countries. So as it says there, it's offers global expertise with local support. Uh, and you'll find that Admiral Markets is uh, licensed, regulated and authorized uh, across a, uh, a multitude of jurisdictions. And they provide very competitive spreads on uh, on popular trading instruments like the euro dollar and the DAX 30. They can also uh, trade and engage through the uh, world's most popular trading platforms, MetaTrader in both the uh, MT4 and MT5 uh, versions. And you can do that through your uh, phone, desktop or browser. And also you have the access to the Admiral Markets, um, Admiral Markets Supreme Edition plugin, which is a, a fantastic addition to the uh, sort of uh, suite of tools available. As always, if you have any questions there, please get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to, uh, to help guide you. So, but what we're here to talk about today is, you know, how are we going to trade using a simple moving average strategy? Uh, and, you know, as it says there, lots of people start out interested in trading using various forms of moving average because it's a very simple tool to use. However, many people are either taught wrong or overcomplicate the use of them. And today, what we're going to do is explain them and share a very simple strategy. Uh, and what you very often find is that, you know, uh, the sort of first trading strategies that many traders who are new to trading uh, work with is uh, basically a moving average strategy. But I'm going to show you in a few slides time the difference between, you know, sort of what people have perhaps offered when they begin trading and actually what's really a more sensible way to look at trading using moving averages. So, you know, what are moving averages? How do we utilize them? You know, what's the, uh, what uh, relevance or importance are they to us? Well, you know, what we're using for them is moving averages are used to gauge the direction of the current trend. And they are a very popular trading tool because it's visual and the vast majority of us are visual in our primary uh, decision-making uh, uh, biases. And so, you know, they are very easy, very simple to see. It's a very, uh, um, as I said, because it's visual, very simple to understand. But what it also does is, you know, especially if you're really starting out as a trader and you're trying to understand the sort of different candlestick patterns and the way the market moves, what it allows traders to do is to view smooth data and also get an impression of its momentum. But what you'll find, ladies and gentlemen, is like any trading instrument, okay, any trading indicator, any trading instrument setup, is that they both have pros and cons. And hopefully what we'll do is we'll give you a little bit of an explanation there here. 
but you know for the most part we're looking to use them as a as a gauge of direction of the trend and an indication of its momentum so for those of you who are completely new to trading i appreciate as i said we have a very broad range of experience here in the room you know what is a moving average well you know really all it does is you know a simple moving average is when a uh, candle closes, it takes the closed data, okay? It, it sort of prints the closed data. And in this particular case, you know, where we have a 10 period moving average, what it does is it will take the last 10 closes, then we effectively take an average of those last 10s and then print that as in this case, as a, as a line on your chart. And that's why it's a moving average. It's an average of the last 10 closes. And it's constantly moving because as the market moves, every time a candle closes, well, then invariably they, that's going to change the moving average that will change the direction of it. Now, what you can do is, you know, we've got there on that particular chart, just a one simple 10 period moving average. And because it's only 10 periods, okay, it's actually very, very close to the price action. And if we look at a couple of slides we'll go through now, it'll just give you a little bit more of an indication for those of us who are uh, very new to trading. So, you know, what you'll find is, you know, when we talk about which moving averages to use, well, uh, unfortunately, that is where there's the question is a little bit like, uh, you know, how long is a piece of string? Because invariably, there's an awful lot of uh, discretion there. But what you'll find on my particular charts is that I use simple moving averages and you'll see them. I have a, a blue simple moving average, which represents a 20 period moving average, the red period moving average is a 50 period moving average and the green is a 200 period moving average now as i say you know you can uh, change that uh, or you know however you wish to see fit some people like to curve fit it you know i go to traders conferences and you can find people you know in, in a room arguing that the 55 period moving average is better than the 45 exponential moving average and other people will be saying that they would prefer to trade using the 65 period weighted moving average okay there are there are various different types of moving averages okay and you can actually put in the uh, whatever number suits your fit but uh, you know what i find is that it's a little bit like um, it's a little bit like Alice in Wonderland okay it's possible to go down the rabbit's hole there when in fact actually you know, that, uh, that's not really what we need to be doing. We're just looking for a simple way to help us gauge trend, okay, direction of trend, and maybe have an idea of the momentum. So you'll find for me a 20, a 50, and a 200 is perfectly adequate for what I'm looking to, to sort of utilize in my own trading decisions, okay? There will be people on here who will use different ones. There'll be people who watch this and may, you know, have uh, different choices, different preferences, and that's absolutely fine. Part of it is an element of doing your own research, and you might find that your particular trading style suits maybe a little bit of a different moving average. But for me, a 20, a 50, and a 200, nice and simple. It's robust. It works, and it actually helps me in what I need to uh, to sort of uh, understand and uh, uh, and to help enable me to make trading decisions. So, you know, as I said, when uh, traders very often start out, they are uh, utilize moving averages quite, uh, quite significantly because they're quite visual, okay? They're quite simple as a simple trading methodology to understand. And what often people are often told is that, well, actually, all you need to do is, you know, when they, a faster moving average crosses over slower moving averages, well, then you just trade in that direction. And if I just try and use some of the, uh, the, the tools here, if you'll just uh, bear with me one moment, let's just get up the, uh, the draw here, okay? Is that, you know, what we have here, hopefully you can see this, okay? As I, as I say every week, I'm a better trader than I am an artist, so please forgive me with my, uh, with my uh, use of the drawing tools, okay? It's just enough to give you the, uh, the idea of what we're looking for. And, uh, you know, what we have here is, you know, in this particular case, we have the, uh, we've got the blue 20 period moving average has crossed up above the red 50, which is above the green 200. And so actually what you would be doing is you'd be just looking to buy there. Okay. Well, I would just be a buyer and you effectively stay long. Okay. You stay a buyer until actually, as you can see here, it crosses. Okay. Once to the downside, now the faster moving average the 20, has crossed beneath the 50 period moving average there okay and as you can see you know if you're if you're buying in here okay and you're uh, you know getting out of your trade here well then that's you know that's a lovely move because you've actually 
your uh, opportunity is the difference between you know the the price where you got in and the price where you uh, sold and you can see that that is very nice and every any trader would be very very uh, pleased with such a uh, with such a day at the office and um, unfortunately it is uh, is not as simple as that all the time that's the uh, that's the challenge that traders have because what can happen is you know when you actually find yourself in what we'd see here as a, a little bit of a, a range bound or a consolidating market well what you can find here is you know you're buying here then you're selling here okay then you're buying here then you're selling here then you're buying here selling here buying here and selling here okay and so really what you're doing there is you know all of the uh, all of the, the all of the sort of uh, all of the uh, the kind of profits that you've made on the previous trade in that nice trend well then actually what's happened is you've just given it back once the market just goes into choppy sideways action and that's the that's the downside okay of moving averages all right so as i say with the, with all of the ideas that we share with you you know there is no perfection in trading there is no perfection it's about taking ideas and concepts that we share with you and starting to meld them in towards your own trading methodology so you know if you uh, if you're going to use moving averages it's important for you to be aware that there are pros and cons so that you can make good solid trading decisions so you know ideally what we're looking to do is you know ideally you know moving averages they work very well in trending environments when a market is trending and moving in a nice particular trend that is when moving averages come into their uh, own but equally equally when you're looking at price and actually you're realizing that there's lots of moving average crossovers okay there's lots of whipsaw going on that in itself is still giving you useful information, still giving you useful information that the market is range bound. OK, it's, uh, it's just going consolidating, going sideways. And actually, you know, if you are a trend following trader, like for my swing traders, I am. Well, then actually there, I would just be particularly leaving that alone. I wouldn't look to engage or try to trade in that because, you know, if I'm a trend trader trying to trend, trying to trade a trend following strategy when the market is range bound. Is not a terribly smart way to, uh, to to operate in markets. So, how are we going to use this information? Okay, how are we just going to use what we've covered in the last couple of slides? So, you know, as I said, we want to avoid using moving averages in choppy conditions. But how could we do that? And how could perhaps we use moving averages to help us? Now, of course, experienced traders are, you know, normally quite adept at being able to understand and identify trends just using simple price action. But as I said, I appreciate we're trying to uh, we're trying to embrace everybody here on the uh, the entire spectrum of uh, trading experience. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and use these moving averages to help us. And what we're going to be particularly looking for is is for alignment between the moving averages, which I'll explain over the next slide or two. So we're going to want to look like those moving averages are fanning out, okay, that actually, and we'll just call this the Wallachi uh, fan. That's what we're going to look at, and I'll explain to you that over the next few slides. But what we're going to be looking for is just to use the you know, moving averages on different time frames to give us confirmation that we are no longer in choppy conditions. And then once we've identified that, well, then what we're going to be looking for is, a, is what we're going to call the first retrace as a means of entry. So, you know, if you're completely new to trading, just bear with us, stay with us for the, uh, for the entire session. And hopefully over the next few uh, slides, over the next 20 minutes or so, then that will actually help become a lot clearer for you. So here we go. Step one. So, you know, I'm going to talk about intraday trades here, but the, uh, the sort of the, the joy of what we're sharing here with it is that actually it can operate across all time frames. I appreciate that there are traders here in the room today who are intraday traders. There are traders who are scalpers, maybe. There are even traders who are swing traders, okay? And there'll be traders who are maybe a longer term end of day position trades. So I'm gonna look and focus a little bit on intraday trades, but what I'm actually sharing with you, what I'm trying to explain to you, the concept in itself can actually work across all time frames. And I'm, I'm always hugely uh, sort of uh, driven towards trying to share concepts and ideas that I would term to be time frame agnostic and instrument agnostic. Namely, they will work across all time frames and all instruments wherever, wherever you may particularly sort of wish to do your business in uh, financial markets. But here we go. Here's step one. So 
for an intraday trade, what we're looking for is we want kind of the two higher time frames to be in a fan. And what does that actually mean? Well, if we're going to be trading off, let's say the 15 minute chart, let's just say that that is our execution chart. Well, then what I'll be looking for is I'll be looking for both the one hour and the four hour charts, okay, to make sure that the moving averages are in alignment. So in that particular case, what that would mean is that the long trades, the 20 is above the 50, which is above the 200. Or for short trades, the 20 is below the 50, which is below the 200. And preferably showing a bit of a nice fan. So uh, just an example, uh, what an example here is we've got daily and four hourly charts, okay, on this. I think this might be, uh, this probably a pound against the dollar, yeah, pound against the dollar here. And, uh, you know, what you can hopefully see here, we just used the drawing tool, is that, you know, price has been in a nice downtrend, okay. But actually we can see it's also price has been beneath the averages, all right. And you know, on the sort of shorter time frame, price is also in a downtrend, and for a good part of it, it has also been beneath its averages. Okay, there has been times when it's crossed above, and remember, those are pullbacks, and those are going to offer us opportunities. But what we're looking for is that in that particular case, we're looking for you know the daily and the four hourly are both in what we call a, a fan because price is in a nice trend. The moving averages are fanning out okay and it's quite clear that we're in a good trend and and that's what we're looking to do to be able to identify good trends because actually as remember what we said is that that's where moving averages are at their most useful when we're in trends rather than trying to trade through choppy conditions so what we're looking for is, if we just, one second, we'll just move those drawings there, is that, you know, once we're looking for that, we then we're trying to see, well, what actually, you know, once we've identified, you know, that something is in a fan, that actually we've got, let's say, higher time frame confirmation, well, then what we're looking for is, well, you know, what would it be our trigger? And what we're actually going to be looking for is that, you know, the crossing of the, of the two moving averages, the 20 and the 50, is the kind of the first part of our methodology. And let me just draw that in here okay so the cross of the 20 and the 50 is the first part of this strategy looking to trade in the direction of that existing trend and here's a here's a key element for you ladies and gentlemen okay for 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 those of us here who let's say are in the uh, european session time who would look to trade european currencies primarily so that might be euro denominated currencies or particularly sterling denominated currencies we're only looking for crosses that occur during the European session. Now, I appreciate, as I said, <clears throat> not only do we have a broad range of experience, but we also have a bit of a global audience here joining us today. So I appreciate there will be some traders watching us who perhaps are trading off the American uh, time zones or other traders who are trading off the Asian time zones. And so you would just look to adapt that accordingly. So you perhaps, you know, if you're trading in the American times, you'd be looking at trading the uh, let's say, for example, the dollar pairs. Whereas, in fact, if you're trading over the sort of Asian time sessions, well, then you know, maybe you'd be looking at sort of Japanese yen, okay, Aussie, Kiwi pairs as your kind of lead pairs trade. So, but, you know, just here for the sake of this presentation, we're just going to be looking for European currencies or we're only going to look for crosses during the European session. So once we've identified that there is a fan, once we've seen that, you know, we've had in this particular case here, I'm just going to draw on here, in this particular case, we can see that the 20 has uh, crossed here beneath the 50 period moving average. Well, then what we're looking for is we're looking for a slowdown in momentum or a small retrace. And that retrace, it could be three, four, five, or, or even more candles, okay? Or as in this case, it actually becomes a three bar reversal. If you don't know what a three bar reversal is, something that I touched upon uh, in one of our earlier trading spotlight webinars, you'll find it on both the Admiral Markets YouTube channel and on the Admiral Markets uh, Facebook uh, page. So please, by all means, just uh, make yourself a, uh, aware of that. Go and watch that video, okay? You'll find it really useful and helpful. But you know, it, what we have here is, you know, the longer term trend has been down, okay? We know, let's say on the four hour and the one hour trade, this will be the 15 minute chart. And what we can see is that in the morning that actually the price is uh, moving averages cross beneath it there. So we now have the 20 beneath the 50, beneath the 200. And actually what happens is we see price actually has a little bit of a retrace. Hopefully you can see that price actually retraces. And I'm just gonna clear this out, make it a little bit clearer for us. 
What we also see is that part of that retrace is what we also would know as a, a three bar reversal. And then actually what we can see is, you know, it has its retrace before price actually descends, price continues on its downward trend. So, you know, what we've had is we've had, you know, the, uh, the moving averages sort of crossing to sort of get that fan going, okay? Then we have that, you know, the slowdown in momentum or even a small retrace before price re-engages itself in the, in the way it moves, in the way it moves in sort of joining the existing downtrend. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to find, use the moving averages to get confirmer in a trend, confirmer in a nice fan happening. Then we're just looking for a, the, what we call the first retrace to help us, give us an opportunity as once that a, uh, those moving averages are crossed in alignment on that execution um, execution time frame, which in this case, let's say, is the 15-minute chart. Well, then, you know, once we have that first retrace or a little slowdown of momentum, well, then we're waiting for momentum to re-engage and to actually to the existing trend to reinforce itself. And in doing so, that offers us an opportunity to take the trade in alignment with the uh, existing deeper trend. So, you know, as I said here, it's just, uh, let me just uh, draw my, use my drawing tool again, is that, you know, that sometimes that sort of uh, retrace, okay, can happen, take three, four, five, or even longer candles, depending upon the, uh, the price action. Or in this particular case, okay, it's just like one candlestick. So here, what uh, has happened is that, you know, the sort of the, uh, the longer time frames, okay, have been uh, trading up. Then actually what happens is price gets up above its moving averages and, and actually we just have one little retrace, okay? We have one candle of retrace before actually price launches itself north, okay? And that's what we're just aware of. So, you know, very often, very often it'll be three or four, five candles, but don't be surprised if every now and then you just get one candle where it launches itself as a very small retrace before it launches itself in the uh, existing uh, direction, which in itself is an indication that we're sort of trying to rejoin and enter a very strong trend. Exactly, Vincenzo, you beat me to it as always, okay? Vincenzo says, single candlestick retracement means strong trend. Absolutely spot on right there, Vincenzo, okay? Super work there, okay? Absolutely excellent. That's, what, uh, that's what's uh, giving us uh, just an indication that, you know, we are joining a strong trend, which is actually what we're looking for, which is what we want. So, what we're looking for is, okay, how do we you know once we've identified that? Well, for this version, and, and what I'm sharing with you is that let's call it the sort of conservative, simple entry for your trades. That's what we're just to, to begin with, just to start with. So if we are, you know, if we've seen a, let's say a bullish fan occur and we're looking for a long trade, well then, you know, our buy position would be one pip plus the spread above the recent high or the fractal. If we were selling in this particular case, well, to begin with, okay, you're going to be selling two pips beneath the recent low or the fractal. As I said, this is today, we're just going to sort of share with you the sort of the simple standard conservative method of uh, engaging. For those of you who have a bit more experience, you might be able to understand and work out ways to get sort of tighter, sharper, quicker entries. But today, as I said, just to help uh, traders who are new to the uh, to new to engaging with markets, we'll be looking at you know just a uh, a sell beneath the recent low or fractal. And in this particular case, so once we've seen that you know we're in alignment here, we can see that there's been a retrace. Well, then actually you know our recent low, we'd be looking to have a sell beneath our recent low. That's where we'd be looking to sell two pips beneath the recent low. That's where that's where our entry is. Okay, so. We know that uh, we know that you know maybe the four hour we're going you know the four hour here we go is is we've got a uh, downtrend okay in place as on the the one hour happened as well okay and this would be the fifteen minute chart in the uh, fifteen minute chart in the morning okay we can see that you know prices beneath the averages okay the the averages cross here okay the twenty the blue the faster crosses beneath the fifty. And price retraces, okay, as a little retrace there before it, the, uh, the existing stronger, you know, longer term trend kicks back in, price drops. And once it breaks two pips beneath the low, well, then that is our entry, okay? That's our particular entry in this example.
So, of course, once we've identified where our, uh, where our entry is, it's important to know where, where our exit is should the trade not work out for us, okay? We always, as good traders, we want to know, you know where we're getting in, okay? We want to know where we're getting out when we're wrong. We want to know where we're getting out when we're right, okay? It's, uh, it's important to know what our exits are. So, here in this particular case, all right, is, you know, we have, where is our stop loss, okay? Where do we place our stop loss once we've identified our entry? The stop loss should be below recent lows for a short or above recent highs uh, for a long, okay? So invariably that should actually be when our entry is here, our stop loss would be above the most recent high, okay? That's what we'd be looking for. That's what we're looking for, okay? Our stop loss would actually be above this recent high, okay? And then our, uh, our after our entry had been identified. So we know where our entry is, okay? Know where our entry is and we also know where our stop loss is there so you know we know where we're getting in we know where our stop loss to get out is if we're wrong but also we want to know well where do we get out you know if the trade works for us well this is one thing where uh, today i'm going to allow you just an element of uh, an element of discretion an element of uh, subjectivity because I appreciate some traders here today, they like to use targets. Some people like to sort of trail their stops in an effort to sort of take a, uh, to join a longer term trade. So if you are particularly, you know, if you are uh, someone who likes to use targets, okay, or perhaps you're not in a position to manage your trade. Maybe this is a trade you take at the start of the day before you sort of uh, go to your, maybe your day job if you're trading part time around your, uh, uh, your existing day job well then there you may be a case of to begin with some assessing like a, a static target of perhaps 20 pips okay just to uh, just to have that or what you could do is also set a target of one and a half times your risk what does that actually mean to the new traders well if we're getting short here and our stop here and if we work out that our trade risk is 30 pips okay between our entry and our stop loss draw this in here okay if we knew that our uh, trade risk was 30 pips there you go well then what we'd be looking for is i'll be targeting one and a half times that okay so this is just purely for a drawing purpose here this would be our target because one and a half times my 30 pips would be a target of 45 pips okay hopefully you can all see that so, you know, some people prefer that, okay, because they actually like to sort of see trying to have an asymmetric reward to risk trade, okay? So that is one of the ways you can do it. Alternatively, alternatively, if you like to use a trailing stop, then, you know, you can utilize either a three-bar trailing stop, where invariably after the close of every candle, you would just place your high, uh, place your stop loss above the high for a short trade, the high of the last three bars, or beneath the low of the last three bars for a long trade. Or simply, you just trail your stop loss behind the 20 period moving average until it closes on the opposite side. So in this particular case, let's clear this down here, just make it a little bit easier for you to see. If we're getting short here, okay, and our stop loss is here, well then actually it's only at the end we can see perhaps here when price closes back up above this 20 period moving average, that is invariably when we are uh, getting out okay. So in this particular trade, you know, we had a, you know, an entry here, okay, our uh, stop loss here, uh, and this was, our, uh, this was our exit here. There we go. Splendid. Hopefully you can uh, see that and understand that. So we have a time sensor uh, um, in my uh, in my office here. Okay, so so there you go. That's the, that's what we had. So we've covered our entries. We've covered our um, we've covered our stop losses, and we've covered what our possible targets are today, based upon your risk profile and how you like to to manage your particular trades. So, so here's a you know a little bit of an example. So it's a uh, um, you know what we actually had here is. You know, uh, we talk about having the sort of two higher uh, uh, timeframes in alignment and trend. It was in this particular case, uh, some of you will have undoubtedly sort of been able to trade this as we had over this, just over this summer that's just gone. Is invariably we had, you know, a, a real sort of a, uh, uh, 
uh, real downtrend in sterling pretty much across everything. So because of all the Brexit shenanigans and the considerations and the worries, well, invariably pretty much every man and his dog was uh, selling the sterling over the summer. So what that allowed us to do, okay, is allowed us to have, you know, just create, you know, almost like super trends, okay, in the sense that hopefully, as I said, you can see there that, you know, pound against dollar on the uh, the daily chart was in a very strong downtrend, okay, and price was beneath the 20, the 50, and the 200. Now you go down to the four hour, okay, once again, it's in a downtrend, and for the most part, okay, price was beneath the 20, the 50, and the 200. Uh, and then you'd go down to the one hour chart, and, you know, once again, for the most part, it was in a downtrend, okay, and where you could see there was quite a lot of time where price would spend, okay, beneath the 20, the 50, and the 200 and that is what actually as i said so it's retraces that offers the opportunity there's an opportunity to trade retraces in an existing strong trend that's what we're looking to use that's how we're going to use moving averages to just try and join existing trends So, you know, here's the kind of setup. And then what I've put together is, you know, there were a few examples or a few opportunities to sort of trade short along with this. And I'm just going to go through and show you how they, uh, how they played out so that you get a little bit of an idea of, you know, exactly how, they, uh, how the trade set up and, uh, and particularly move. Uh, and on this, uh, on this first example here, okay, so, you know, back there in early July, we, we knew that on, you know, the daily was going down, the four hours going down, the one hour was going down. So let's just uh, draw them in so we can just remind, you know, we, we had a, a nice fan, okay, there was a nice, uh, well, actually fan there, okay, in terms of we knew there was a downtrend. And then in the morning, okay, remember, it's, this is, a, you know, it's a effectively European session, so trading pound against dollar, we're just looking for crosses here. And actually what happened here was that invariably, you know, we had a, a the cross here, okay, that happened here. And then as you can see yourself, price retraced, okay. And for the purposes of today's session, okay, for the purposes of today's session, you know, for the uh, standard conservative entry, well then, you know, we'd be looking to be short here, okay, two pips beneath the uh, the recent low, which was here. And our stop loss is above the uh, the recent high. Okay, so we had our stop loss here and our uh, entry here. There we go. And, you know, however you wished to, uh, um, to trade that using a, a target, whether it was a, a simple 20 pip or uh, whether it was one and a half times the, uh, uh, the actual trade risk, that trade itself worked out. Now, perhaps if maybe you know, if you'd have if you are a uh, trailing trader, okay, and you like to use a trailing stop, well, what would have happened is when price actually closed back up above the twenty period moving average here, you would have closed this trade for approximately around about break even, okay, a rain or a break even trade, and so that just shows that you know there is, as I say, there is no perfection, okay, there is no perfection in this particular example. Utilizing a a target would have. Uh, would have uh, resulted in a uh, profitable trade, but utilizing a trading stop loss would have meant a break-even trade. But there will be other examples, as I'll show, that actually that sort of works out. It's what's the important thing for you as a trader is just to choose your uh, choose your exit before you even place the trade. Okay, it's no use starting a trade with a uh, with a target and then actually just changing it midway through the trade. That's that's not the way a uh, that's not the way a good disciplined uh, mechanical trader would work. Okay, it's about it's about just choosing the way. Okay, and my normal suggestion is do. 20 trades of each, okay, and then find which was the easiest for you to uh, to effectively execute flawlessly. because being consistent in your execution is, is, is much more important than trying to find the most perfect exit, because as you'll find, there is no perfect exit. So, you know, uh, what happened then, you know, a couple of days later, we had a similar one. And this was, you know, this was kind of a, yeah, a, an interesting one here is that what we had is, you know, we once said, once again, we knew the daily was down. We knew the four hour, we knew the one hour, okay, the one hour, the four and the daily. We knew they were down. And then what we had is, you know, kind of uh, around about sort of eight o'clock, okay, what we had was price crossed us. The 20 period moving average crossed down beneath, okay, the 50 period moving average price in this case dropped for a couple of candles and then it actually pulled back it actually pulled back here okay it pulled back here and, and what we had was that you know we had this was our first this was our first retrace here okay after the uh, the pullback and now for the kind of standard trade all right well then invariably you know we're going to be short here with our uh, stop you know kind of one pip plus the spread above 
And what we can see is that once again, you know, if we, you know, we have our uh, entry here, okay, we have our stop loss here, is that invariably, you know, whether using utilizing either a you know, 20 pip stop or effectively a, uh, a one and a half times risk target, okay, well then invariably we can see price drop and drop pretty strongly. Once again, if you'd have used the uh, if you'd have used the trailing, okay, just on the twenty period moving average, well, you'd have probably got out of here just for a very small loss, for a very zero point two hour loss, okay. So once again, as I said, you know, in this particular case, the using a target, a fixed target over a trailing trailing stop, would have actually served you better. But that's not always the case. It's just in these examples, all right. And I'm just trying to share with you to see that there you know there is no perfection. It's about just being able to follow a plan very simply and clearly for you. That's what's more important. So uh, here we had, you know, uh, once we went on another few days, okay, during this, you know, great uh, sort of uh, pound against US dollar downtrend, then uh, here we go. Let's bring the drawing tools up. And this, you know, this is one we've looked at before, but we know daily is down, four hourly is down, one hourly is down. Okay, just to draw them in here. There we go. We know they're all down. So, you know, we've got pretty much a super trend. Okay. The pound against dollar, 15 minute chart. Once again, or, you know, around about sort of 8, 830, we can see that actually price, it's effectively the moving average crosses beneath the sort of the 50. So we've got the 20 beneath the 50, beneath the 200. Price pulls back. And then what we have here is, you know, price basically, we we'll have a short trade here with our stop above. Actually, what we'll be looking at is that, you know, utilizing, you know, our, uh, um, uh, our uh, yeah our 20 pip target okay if you're using a static target it gets hit here okay our uh, uh, one and a half times it gets actually hit about here but then also if we're using a trailing target well then invariably we're closing here so in this particular case using you know a trailing target would probably you know generate a uh, a better outcome than just using a uh, a simple 20 pip static target so you know as i said it's a horse of the courses it's a case of understanding what kind of uh, what kind of trader you are okay whether you're comfortable using targets or whether you prefer using trailing stops i, I always talk about you know I, I like to use targets i'm a you know i'm an ex-military guy i like to hit a target it's as simple as that that's that works for me you know but i appreciate other people would have different ways and views of going about it and that is absolutely fine Uh, and once again, just a, you know, a, another example here, very quick example, whereby we had the you know, dailies down, four hourlies down, one hourlies down, you, you, you know, you get the picture now. And we can actually see the price, you know, the moving averages, okay, they crossed into alignment. And then we had, you know, the first retrace here, price pulls back quite nicely. And then what we have is we have our stop here, okay, sorry, our entry, but I do apologize. Let's just clear those drawings to start again there. We have our entry here, two pips beneath, okay, our stop above the recent high, uh, and then we're in a position to basically go for uh, our 20 pip target or even, you know, our one and a half times target with that. But then alternatively, you can see that actually, you know, price, if you were just trailing it behind the, uh, the 20 period moving average, it moves much further itself, okay. So in that particular case, you know, a, a, a trailing stop may have actually worked a little bit better for you. It's a, once again, it's, you know, it's a little bit of uh, horses for courses in that, in that particular case. So, you know, as I said, just a few uh, points to take away is that, you know, not unsurprisingly, this works best when your price is rejoining a strong trend and that's what we're looking to do. And that's why we're looking for the utilizing the higher trade timeframes to give us that confirmation. And also within FX markets where we want to buy strength and sell weakness wherever possible. And as always with experience, you'll recognize the best opportunity. So I always suggest go and do 20 trades of one style, uh, analyze them, find out you know, you know, how, how you traded that, how uh, well it worked for you, and then you're in a position to work with your own data. So your task from today's session, okay, I always like to give you a little bit of homework. Go away and just look through your favorite trading instrument. Maybe, maybe you're an FX trader, maybe you're a DAX trader, maybe you're, you know, you're a yen trader, okay? Look to see where there are periods where, you know, you had kind of like a period of a super trend, almost like three time frames in alignment. And, you know, were there opportunities on an intraday basis to rejoin that trend using just this simple moving average strategy? 
And with so, was it better to use a trailing stop or a static target for your trades? For some instruments, it might actually be better to use a trailing stop, okay? And it just might be easier for, for you to, to, to deal with as, a, as, a, as part of your trading psychology. And also have a look for those of you experienced traders who've got a little bit of uh, nous and savvy behind you, okay? Well, then were there ways to achieve an earlier entry? As I said today, all I've shared with you is, let's say, the conservative, you know, standard entry, okay? But those of you who have a little bit of experience might be able to look at that and identify ways to achieve an earlier entry, which would, of course, give you a tighter trade risk, which would mean that in terms of your targets, that might actually play out more favorably. So to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, remember, moving averages are a simple and visual trading tool, okay, which work well in trending markets, not so much in range-bound markets. But that simple moving average strategy, okay, using, let's say, the Wallachi fan, allows you to confirm that you're in a strong trend before you look for those particular setups. Then we are kind of looking for what is effectively, it's, you know, it's a, a version of a breakout. Price has a retrace. But then when price, the momentum re-engages and actually takes us back past that recent high or that recent low, that breakthrough there is our chance to join the existing trend. So we've got a couple of minutes, okay? Just a couple of minutes, I'll just, we'll have a look at for one or two moments. But as always, we've got uh, interesting uh, new sort of exciting uh, uh, opportunities here with Admiral Markets. And here's a chance for you to join the exclusive trading spotlight community. You can do that by invariably get some support after this webinar, okay? When you most need it, okay? I appreciate that when we share ideas with you, sometimes when you sat there on your own, that can be a challenge. Well, we're trying to help you here with Admiral Markets, we're trying to come up with this, you know, this uh, uh, sort of fantastic, uh, fantastic promotion, you know, very often, uh, or rather very, uh, very well sort of uh, driven and run by my colleague Marcus, okay, where it allows you to get your support using the Traders Yard uh, platform. It gives you a chance to discuss trading strategies, events, signals, and more with other traders like yourself. There'll also be some updates from, as I said, from my colleague Marcus and myself and Jens, and to see, you know, what we think of markets or, uh, or, you know, or what we don't. You'll also have a chance to follow any of these recordings that you've, uh, that you've missed. So here's your chance and you can sign up now, okay? You can register with tradersyard.com there or you can join the uh, Trading Spotlight group. You can see it there, tradersyard.com forward slash group forward slash 312. Please, uh, please come along and uh, look to join us and for, you know, for, uh, for this first month only, there's no live account required with Admiral Marcus. Just come and join us, okay? Just uh, come and join and just uh, 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 sort of interact with us uh, and we'll be, uh, we'll be most pleased to sort of uh, have you there with us. So uh, as always, don't forget to join us for the next Trading Spotlight webinar here where you know, we have you know, my colleague Marcus is going to talk you all about stop losses and why and how to use it. He'll identify you know, what is a stop loss, the benefits of having one, when to use a trailing stop versus a, uh, a stop loss itself, which is uh, kind of useful from what we've just touched upon there over the last few slides. That will be at 2 p.m. London time, Wednesday, uh, September 25th. Check your inbox for the webinar link and, you know, you can head over to the, uh, the admiralmarkets.com uh, website, okay, to register for the live webinars. Uh, and as always, you'll find, you know, there's plenty of uh, information here on the uh, Admiral Markets uh, website for us. And you can go to admiralmarkets.com for more analysis and education. And, you know, if you have questions, you can always contact us at hello at admiralmarkets.com or youtube.com forward slash admiralmarkets or facebook.com forward slash admiralmarketsglobal. And please interact with us there. We always enjoy your, your comments and your questions. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We've just had a, a very quick, uh, simple moving average strategy. All right, we've just uh, we've got a, just a minute or two left. I'm just going to very quickly, just quickly switch to maybe one sort of uh, um, one instrument on the uh, uh, Admiral Markets MT4 platform. We'll just have one look at it to, to finish up for our session. But as always, we really appreciate you joining us, and uh, we've uh, appreciated your interaction today. So if you just bear with me for uh, one second.
Hopefully you can still all see my uh, slides here. Here is, uh, for just for a moment, Euro Sterling here on the, the four hour chart. Hopefully you can see there very, very nicely there, okay? Very nicely, it's been in a, a four hour trend and for the most part, it's been down beneath it's those moving averages. You can see the, the 20, the 50 and the 200. So if I start going down to the one hour chart, okay, there's a little bit more, okay? You can see that we have, a, a, you know, it's trading back up and above it, but for the most part, you can see that that trend has just been confirmed there. It's in a nice downtrend, okay, as we've seen over the uh, the last sort of uh, a few weeks, okay, last uh, few weeks from sort of end of all September, and for a lot of that time, it's been beneath the moving averages there, okay, quite happily. You know, and I was just looking at, you know, going for a, a couple of quick examples here that, so here on the 4th of September, we knew that we had the four hour and the one hour in alignment. And then actually what we had here was price crossed over in the early morning session, okay, here on the Euro Sterling 15 minute chart. We can see our level here. Price had a first retrace after the cross. And we can see that basically price broke through that and fell down and away, okay. And we can see that. And so once again, in this particular example, you can see that, you know, had you uh, sort of a trailing stop would have worked much, much better than just a static particular sort of target. Uh, and actually, I think we saw on the, you can see there's a few examples here, a particular or one we, uh, we got on board here was the, on the 11th September, where the uh, sort of the four hour and the one hour still in that nice downtrend. And actually it is as price retraced into the cross before it rolled over and fell away there quite nicely. So there's just a couple of very quick examples. I appreciate uh, we're always, uh, we're always touch for time, okay, in our sessions. I hope you found that useful. I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and, you know, we look forward to speaking to you soon.